the mystery of history volume one and um we are on lesson eight today so i've got Gwynny and Edward up here, which I'll probably not be able to focus the phone on. Uh, so I'll probably focus it on when I'm reading or else on Winry. We're reading about the Tower of Babel. Uh, when we are done, we're going to print off a whole bunch of stuff. We have the... I'm here. Yeah, we're going to pick that off. We have to print off the Sumerians from yesterday and the Tower of Babel. And then we have some stuff from Science to print off. Bible, we're, we're at it right now. Okay. The Tower of Babel. To fully understand the story of the Tower of Babel, you will need to examine the early family of Noah. The Bible says that Noah had three sons. They were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. When the flood occurred, it was only Noah, his wife, Noah's three sons, and each of their wives who were spared. This means the entire human race started over again from three, these couples. This also means that you are distantly related to one of the three sons of Noah. The descendants of Noah through Shem, Ham, and Japheth probably stayed in the area of Mesopotamia for about 100 years. Because of the flood event, many of Noah's family might have worshipped one god. But as man quickly repopulated and began to move around, people got away from teaching of one god. The Sumerians, for example, worshipped oh, idols. Right here. Idolatry, which is the worship of statues, objects, nature, or man himself, became a way of life for many. It's in the spiritual climate that we find um, the story of the Tower like of Babel. Not like when, not what, when we go down and mm -hmm. fall ahead. It's in the spiritual climate we find the story of, of the Tower of Babel in 2242 B.C. It says in Genesis 11:4, and they said, "Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth." A tower back then more than likely re resembles a ziggurat like those built in Sumer. In pride, man built the Tower of Babel. Well, in response, to rip ouch, Edward, that hurts. Wait, why is it on you? Because it's an earring. In response, God confused man's languages and scattered people's groups across the earth. It apparently bothered the Lord that people were growing self-sufficient in their attitudes. Well, they were putting themselves before God. They seemed to want to take care of themselves and not depend or having a relationship with God. They peeped, they wanted to be God. The people wanted their own city, their Why own did name. Why they want to be God? Because that's usually what people tend to do when they don't love God. The people wanted their own city, their own name, and a huge tower to demonstrate their strength. We also call could call that pride. It says in the Bible that the Lord decided to put an end to this pride and rebellion by confusing their languages. Up until this time, everyone probably spoke the language that Noah and his son spoke. And any other language had they existed before the flood would have been lost. Genesis 11 says, 7 says, Come, let us go down in their confused language that we may, they may not understand one another's speech. Us in this passage refers to the Trinity. Am I going to get, quickly get some bows? Um, you come when we're done with this. I'm almost done. We find the same terms in creation. The people then dispersed and quit building that particular city. The acts of dispersion and the confusion of different languages were critical to the way humans would forever relate to one another. No longer could they freely communicate. No longer would they be able to trade easily or travel about the land. No longer would men and women be likely to marry someone from another land. They wouldn't be able to communicate. In fact, the world today... In fact, in the world today, there are about 5,000 languages. Like, kind of like, you know how Daddy's teaching you German a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, that's well, a different language. See, Mom, so where was Karen really? Okay, that this has nothing to do with what we're reading. With groups of people now isolating themselves from others, some distant genetic differences began to appear. Skin color, eyes, mm. shape, jawlines, and noses became more and more pronounced and unique in each group. Before long, different ethnic groups mm. began to develop. Many scholars believe that the different groups we see today begin to develop as far back as the Tower of Babel. Interestingly, the word Babel in history means, or Hebrew means confusion. Have you ever read a toddler? Have you ever heard a toddler try to talk? We often call it babbling. We also use babbling to refer to the gurgling sound a brook, brook makes as it runs downstream. It is intriguing, Gwynny, you need to let your sister go. It is intriguing how many words hang around for a long time. 
Even more interesting is the city of Babylon, which springs up later in history in the same place where the Tower of Babel stood. From there, many may also rebuild against God. Today, an ancient tower remains in Babylon that may believe, many believe to be the Tower of Babel. Seeing that would be a great field trip. All right, so that is Lesson 8, the Tower of Babel. If you are interested, um, you can experience your own Tower of Babel by renting some tapes from the library that are in another language or probably YouTube, since this was written before YouTube, um, and then listening to how they uh, sound so different from ours. Um, and that is the lesson for today. Do you have anything to say? Bye. Um, think it, stop. Um, 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 uh, thank you for listening. I think we had a nice day, so. Bye. Mom, I'm trying to. Do you want to say bye? Right away. I, I would. You. Bye. Bye.